Iran will never be allowed to have a nuclear weapon. Good morning. I'm pleased to inform you the American people should be extremely grateful and happy. No Americans were harmed in last night's attack by the Iranian regime. We suffered no casualties. All of our soldiers are safe, and only minimal damage was sustained at our military bases. Our great American forces are prepared for anything. Iran appears to be standing down, which is a good thing for all parties concerned and a very good thing for the world. No American or Iraqi lives were lost because of the precautions taken, the dispersal of forces, and an early warning system that worked very well. I salute the incredible skill and courage of America's men and women in uniform. This is a CBS News special report. I'm Gail King with Anthony Mason and Tony DeCopel here in New York. As you see, we're at the White House where President Trump is about to speak publicly for the first time since Iran's missile attack on U.S. troops in Iraq last night. Iraq's military says no one was hurt after Iran fired more than a dozen missiles at two bases where hundreds of U.S. troops in Iraq are stationed. Iran says the attack was retaliation for the U.S. killing of its most influential general, that's Qasem Soleimani. President Trump is about to speak. He tweeted last night, although this will be the first time we see him since this Iranian strike on two military bases in Iraq that host U.S. military contractors. He did tweet last night saying all is well and will be making a statement tomorrow. That is now today. We are awaiting that statement. Let's go to Paula Reed, who is at the White House, where the president uh, is about to begin speaking. Paula, good morning. Good morning. This is one of the greatest tests of President Trump's presidency, the eyes of the world. We are hours away from President Trump's response to Iran's missile attack on two military bases last night. Iran's supreme leader is warning that more retaliation attacks from Tehran could be imminent. Katherine Johnson has more from Washington. The two bases hit have been on high alert in recent days, with indications that Iran was planning to strike. Last night, the president met with top defense officials at the White House to try to discuss a strategy on how the U.S. might respond. Iran launched more than a dozen missiles overnight, aimed at two Iraqi bases housing U.S. troops. Iranian state TV said it was revenge for last week's killing of General Qasem Soleimani. He was buried hours after the attack, following a massive multi-city funeral procession filled with anti-American statements. One base targeted was in Erbil, in northern Iraq. After that, we also heard uh, helicopters in the sky. And just a little while ago, we also heard a fighter jet uh, overhead. The other was at Al-Assad Air Base, home to about 1,500 personnel. We're prepared to attack if we have to. Earlier in the day, President Trump sent a warning to Iran. If Iran does anything that they shouldn't be doing, they're going to be suffering the consequences. But after the attacks, the president tweeted, all is well, and so far, so good. Iran's foreign minister also reacted on social media, saying, quote, Iran took and concluded proportionate measures in self-defense, and they do not seek escalation or war. It's very simple what we want from Iran. Stop trying to kill us. Some U.S. lawmakers hope both sides show restraint. This could spiral, spiral out of control very, very quickly as do many Iranian Americans. I feel for the troops that are going there right now. I feel for their families. I feel that both sides, the people, the public, they don't want to have any war. Iranian state TV says Iran has 100 other targets if the U.S. Good morning. We're coming on the air right now because President Trump is about to speak to the nation about the crisis with Iran. That is the scene at the White House right now. The president will be responding to those Iranian missile strikes against two U.S. military bases in Iraq last night. Retaliation for the U.S. drone strike against Iran's top commander, Qasem Soleimani. That was last week. That killed him last week. The Iranians have responded with those rockets you see right there. More than a dozen ballistic missiles fired at two U.S. military bases in northern and western. 
Western Iraq last night. So far, no reports of U.S. casualties. You see the president's cabinet now coming to join him there, Vice President Mike Pence, the Defense Secretary Esper, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, along with the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, surrounding the president at the middle of the podium right there. This will be his first response after the tweet last night where he said all is well in response to that Iranian military strike. The Iranians said have, have said that this is the, all the retaliation they will have for now, the Supreme Leader. Joining me right now on the telephone is Fox News strategic analyst, General Jack Keane. And General, you were with me earlier this week and you said, look, the Iranians have a choice, come to the negotiating table or dig in here. What do you think about this strike that some people are saying was a move to save face? Yes, you know, put these bombs uh, in, in place, but not hurt anybody, not impact the troops, just to save face. What's your take? Yeah, <clears throat> Maria, I think this is what de-escalation looks like. I, mean, I think we've re restored deterrence uh, once again uh, by uh, President Trump's move and, and taking down Soleimani, which was completely unexpected. It was a stunning surprise to the Iranians. As I said earlier in the week, I believe that Rock Khomeini, uh, this is uh, his professional associate for 20 years and also his personal friend. He did all of his execution of uh, Iran's foreign adventures and foreign wars. Um, I believe that at that time when that took place that the we had an opportunity. And, and the opportunity was to reach out to them and start talking to them about a general framework for negotiations. And if they want to do it covertly and secretly, fine. If that's too much political heat for them to be able to do that publicly. And I believe that even, even more so now. When you think about what was available to them, we had 80,000 troops in the area. We have ground bases, naval bases, and air bases, all where U.S. troops dominate those bases. They attacked two Iraqi bases, where, which houses some U.S. troops. The largest base that houses troops in Iraq is Balad. At least 56 people have been killed and more than 213 injured in a stampede during the funeral of the Iranian general who was killed by a U.S. drone strike on Friday. Massive crowds gathered to pay tribute to Commander Soleimani, and the burial was delayed until this evening due to the fatalities. It comes as the European Union's diplomatic chief voiced concern at Tehran's latest step away from the 2050 nuclear deal. The general's death continues to ripple through the region, with the US and its allies on alert for any retaliation. In a minute, we'll hear from our political editor on the challenge for the UK and our Washington correspondent on the president's gamble. But first, let's go to Beirut and our foreign affairs correspondent, Jonathan Rugman. Jonathan. Matt, as you say, over 50 killed or 50 dead at this funeral, uh, with over 200 injured. But the numbers may rise because they have been rising all day. Essentially, what happened was that General Soleimani's funeral cortege set off in this small town of Kerman, and there were so many people on the streets uh, that a stampede developed and people were killed as a result. Though I'm told that the general's body has now been transferred to a martyr's section of a cemetery in Kerman for burial. At the same time, the Iranians have been ratcheting up uh, the rhetoric of retaliation. The secretary of Iran's National Security Council has talked of 13 so-called revenge scenarios being considered. The response, he says, likely to include medium and long-range missiles. And this official describing even the weakest response that Iran might give as being a historic nightmare for the Americans. Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei, has reportedly himself said that his, to his Security Council that the response must be direct, proportional, openly carried out by the Iranians themselves. In other words, not by their proxies. And this is what General Salami, the head of the Revolutionary Guard, the unit that General Soleimani was also part of, had to say to mourners in Kerman earlier today. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. 
and we will make America great again. God bless you and good night. I love you.